Two months have passed since a fold operation transported the SDF-1 and most of Macross City into solar orbit just this side of Pluto. While attempting to return to Earth, the Space Fortress repulsed an attack by the pursuing Zentradi forces by undergoing a modular transformation. The transformation destroyed much of the city due to its radical effects on the fortress's basic structure. But in the intervening months, the damage has been repaired and things have returned to normal. Rick Hunter, Robotech Defense Force's newest recruit, has been working hard, working to survive the rigorous training necessary to make it as one of the elite of the Defense Force, the Veritech fighter pilots, training to toughen him up on the ground and in space. His basic training complete, Rick looks forward to his first leave. Rick, let me carry that. No, it's okay. But it looks bad. Stop worrying about the well, uniform. Well, if you don't mind. <gasps> Please, Rick, stop just a minute. Ooh. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I promise we'll only be a second. What? Oh, I can't go in there. What else did you have in mind? Oh, boy. Mm. Mm. <gasps> Nano peeking. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Do you have a selection of lingerie? Of course we do. Step right over there. Darn paper bags. Uh-oh. Huh? I think this will do. <laughs> Maybe oh. for you. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. 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 Uh, we'll come back. What? But of course, ladies, it'll be my pleasure. Wow. Well, Rick, what do you think of it? Huh? Huh? What are you doing? Uh, uh th that's a great outfit, all right. Hmm. Oh, so this is what you were talking about, Dr. Lang. That's right, Captain. I've never seen another reaction like it. Since this is the area the full system generators were in, might there be a possible relation? Yes, Captain, that is a possibility. Perhaps when the fold system disappeared, the space-time fabric was distorted. This could be the result. Mm. Did you find any other side effects? Nothing's shown up yet, sir. All right, keep at it. Our wonderful report. Captain. Mm? It's only a theory, of course, but I think we may be able to utilize this strange reaction as some kind of protective barrier. Barrier, hmm? Can you develop it? Yes, good. Start on it immediately and keep me posted. Yes, sir. Commander, I tried every form of analysis I know, yet I still cannot understand why they found it necessary to change to this format. However, a structural modification of this nature will most assuredly diminish the gravity control forces to practically nil. Of this, I am certain. Playback request? No, let it continue a little longer. Yes, sir. What planet is that? I believe it is the sixth planet of this system. I expect they'll probably try to hide behind it, or perhaps within the rings to escape detection. Interesting. If they switch to ECM within close proximity to those rings, my lord, we'll never find them. Yes, it would be the logical decision for them. Then what is your decision? I'll let them attempt their clever little plan. We'll follow them. As they would say, it'd be like shooting fish in a barrel, whatever that means. Well, Rick, what do you think? From today on, you're a real-life fighter pilot. You even get your own room. Congratulations. Hmm. But remember, even though you have your own room, it doesn't mean you can fool around. Oh, and one more thing. What? Attention. Hmm. Ah. Uh, Good afternoon. Ah. Uh, you little devil. I didn't know um, you knew Commander Hayes. Yeah, well, kind of. You know what I mean? It's him. <laughs> That's Mr. Lingerie. Mr. Lingerie. My dear Commander Foker, is this the brilliant new pilot you were raving about? Introduce him. Of course. Rick? Uh, I'm Rick Hunter. I'm Commander Lisa Hayes. Uh, Please Rick do... Hunter? Uh, why does that name sound so familiar to me? Uh... <gasps> I remember now. So that's our civilian pilot. I wondered why he didn't know how to fly his plane. Hey, Roy, who's the sourpuss? <gasps> 
That old sourpuss happens to be Commander Hayes, our first officer. What? <laughs> You're that loudmouth pilot, aren't you? And you must be that... Yep. Oh, no. Oh. I'd say you'd better watch uh, that mouth from now on, because she's your superior officer. Sir! I hope for his sake he takes your advice. Oh, by the way, I don't know what your particular problem is, but it really doesn't look too good for you to be hanging around in lingerie shops. Lecture! Captain, I've activated the ECM. In T-minus 12 minutes, the enemy will be completely unable to track our position, and then we set the trap. So what's our next move? A blitzkrieg. A what? A blitzkrieg? <gasps> Captain! When we leave Saturn, they will still be on our flank, so I would like to find a way out of this trap. You all know how dangerous this will be. But, Captain... There is no other way. Yes, sir, Captain. All sections will commence preparation for an immediate counterattack. Excellent. Huh? Tomorrow, the SDF-1 will enter the rings of Saturn. Soon after, the defense forces will initiate a counterattack. You will all receive your orders tomorrow. But until then, I want you to think of just one thing. Robotech. We're all counting on you, men. Oh, and if there's anyone you want to see, do it tonight. That is all. Huh? <gasps> Sorry I took so long. Oh, don't worry about it. What was the big emergency anyway? Hmm, they're shipping us out tomorrow evening. Oh, Rick, that's... that's just wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Minmei? I can't believe it. Your first mission! <laughs> I'm so very proud of you. What's wrong? Nothing much. Oh! Oh, how beautiful! Rick, look. Hmm? <laughs> yep, that's a pretty dress, all right. Hmm. I'll have you know that this is the dress we chose together. Wait a minute, Minne. You look beautiful. Really. <laughs> you mean that, Rick? Am I really beautiful? Sure. Why don't we have our picture taken? Oh, I'm not pretty enough for that. Of course you are. Don't be silly. Hey, camera! Over here! No, here! Deposit point. Thank you. Are you ready yet? Mm, there. Okay. All set, please. <laughs> Looks okay to me. Oop, I better be getting back home. My Uncle Max gets mad when I stay out too late at night. <laughs> With boys, I mean. Yeah. Well, good luck tomorrow and have a good mission, Rick. I'll see you when you get back. Uh, Bye! Uh... Mm hmm. I might not be back. Captain, we've discovered a way to move the barrier system. Oh, you have? However, there's a problem. We can't cover the entire fortress at any one time. Oh, I see. So we can't cover the whole thing. I guess she's too big. Captain, the best we were able to come up with is this. Our system can still be utilized as an effective countermeasure. In case of enemy attack, these photon barriers can be moved to deflect any incoming lasers. Thus. I see. Deflection point control is handled by universal gyros controlled from the bridge. We refer to it as the pinpoint barrier. Hmm. You've done well. Thank you, sir. That's pathetic. Come in. Hey, I figured you'd be awake. Hi, Roy. Tomorrow you'll have to be up early. <clears throat> I know. I sympathize with you, Rick, but you'll just have to count fan jets or something. Go to sleep. Mm, I feel sorry for the poor kid. The first combat duty is always the worst. I remember mine. 
It's tough waiting around, thinking of the battle ahead. to sleep. Losing a night's sleep won't kill you. Hmm. Of course it won't. All Vertex report for roll call at Prometheus. All Vertex report immediately for roll call at Prometheus. Orange, blue, and red squadrons will commence flight preparations on second level after them. All remaining squadrons prepare for takeoff from pre-assigned locations. Reactor control. Bridge request status report of first and third class machines. Skull Squadron, commence immediate takeoff. Veritech Skull Squadron... <clears throat> I mean, Veritech Skull Squadron 23, pilot Rick Hunter, prepared for takeoff. Roger. Orange, red, and blue squadrons, proceed to Cassini Quadrant, point R18, and commence decoy maneuvers. Squadrons, utilize the QL4 wavelength to access battle flight patterns. Look at them. I wonder why they all fly so dangerous. Skull 23, what in blazes are you doing? Huh? Just where were you at the meeting? Asleep? I'm sick and tired of repeating myself. That kind of flying will give you away to the aliens. But... This is no time for acrobatics, you idiot. But all the other pilots were flying really dangerously, so I thought that... Shut up, Hunter. You follow your instructions, you hear me? Okay, okay, I gotcha. Is that the way to speak to superiors? Look around, wise guy. You're the only one who's flying dangerously. Uh, Roger, Roger. <laughs> This is going to be a little more difficult than I thought. There's a skull leader to all Veritex. In T minus 12 seconds, we'll be coming into the shadow zone, so keep one eye on the ice and the other on your gauges. So that's the shadow zone, huh? That's easy for you to say. It's dark up here, Commander. What's the matter? The game getting too rough for you? Oh. How come I'm the one who's lucky enough to be razzed by some dumb know-it-all in a nice, safe control room? Just once before this operation is over, it'd be nice if he'd learned to keep his mouth oh, shut. that's all right, Claudia. I don't really mind. Lieutenant Hayes, how much longer will it be before the Veritex reach their destination? I estimate about three minutes. Hmm. All right. At the time the enemy enters the rings, we'll begin firing the main gun. So prepare to execute. Roger, Captain. Ready for your orders, Commander Greentide. Captain Zareel, you will proceed to the Six Planets Ring Zone and capture the alien vessel. Sir. And with as little damage as possible. Yes, Commander. Here they come. Okay, let's get them. Such a weak force is completely illogical. They have no idea how to wage war. It's absolutely and totally illogical. 
It would almost seem as if they don't realize we're holding back nearly all of our forces. I believe the time is excellent to show them just what they're up against. Captain, the enemy vessel is approaching the target zone. Uh, Sector 2. Very good. Raise the ship and prepare to fire the main gun. Target vessel sighted. Now firing main gun. I don't understand what's wrong. Flying. The main gun will not fire. Huh? In all probability, the pinpoint barrier is interfering with the energy transformers. I'm doing a vibrational analysis now. Over. Bouge moi. The skull is our last chance. Thanks, Rick. Nice shoot. Hey, big brother, why haven't they fired the big gun yet? What's holding them up? So, this is the way it will end, huh? Captain, do you think it would be possible to somehow concentrate all the pinpoint barrier energy and direct it to the front of the Daedalus? Yes, it would, but why? I have an idea, but I don't know if it's feasible or not. Hmm. Well, let's try it. All right, Kim and Sammy, collect the desk droids and place them at the front of the Daedalus. Right. Claudia, direct the fortress in a frontal attack on the alien ship. You got it. Congratulations! Yeah! <laughs> Incredible! Three cheers for Daedalus! I'm getting to be a real fan of yours, Lisa! <laughs> uh, 
Perhaps it's time we called in reinforcements. Yes, come on. <laughs> Zero's Zentradi destroyer was obliterated, and the few remaining battle pods were dispatched with no problems. Commander Roy Foker's Skull Squadron would be decorated for their valiant action in battle. However, Rick couldn't erase the memory of the Zentradi soldier's terrified face from his mind. He felt he simply could not fire at another living being. He mentioned this to Foker. Roy said that he had felt the same way when he was a new recruit, but that Rick shouldn't worry. Experience would erase all doubts. Rick slowly began to realize that things were changing inside him, as he had little trouble firing on the battle pods during combat. But being the first human inside the Zentradi battleship and escaping to tell the tale had started wheels turning in his mind. He remembered his life up to that point and thought, things certainly have turned out differently for everyone caught up in the interstellar war. The planet Mars is the setting for the next thrilling episode of Robotech, as Britai calls for reinforcements in order to capture the SDF-1. Captain Global drives his crew to the brink of exhaustion as he attempts to keep the overwhelming Zentradi forces at bay. Be sure to watch Bye Bye Mars, the next episode of Robotech.